Hello and welcome to the second in the video series on getting through the PCT Sierra section. This video is covering resupply strategy. In this video I'll go through each of the resupply locations detailing what they can provide if they accept resupply parcels and other relevant information and recommendations. I'll then go through the exit routes from the PCT trail to get to the various resupply locations and I'm going to provide a summary table of all of the exit routes. And finally I'll give a couple of options for resupply strategy uh, for normal snow conditions and high snow conditions. The section of the PCT this video relates to is the Sierra section shown in the yellow box. The section covers 315 miles from Kennedy Meadows South near mile 702 through to Sonora Pass at mile 1017. To the east of the Sierra Range is Route 395 where the main resupply towns are located and there are also some resupply options close to the trail. When I was preparing for the PCT in 2019, I was only aware of the most common resupply locations and exit routes. In reality, there are many more options to exit the trail and other places to resupply. In total, from my research, I found 19 options to exit the PCT east onto Route 395, where the bigger towns and cities are, and four resupply options just off the trail. The resupply options on Route 395 are the towns of Lone Pine, Independence, Big Pine, Bishop, Levining and Bridgeport. A short way off Route 395 on Route 203 is Mammoth Lakes. There is a bus that runs from Bishop down to Lone Pine, stopping at all of the towns, and it runs from Monday to Friday, twice a day. And from Bishop North to Bridgeport, there is a bus that runs once a day. Otherwise, Route 395 is a busy road and easy to hitch on. Lone Pine is a small town which has the perfect balance of great facilities within a small, easy walking distance. I did not intend to resupply there, but ended up going to wait out a storm, and I was glad I did. The hotel was excellent, supermarket had good selection, as did the outfitters, and there were some great places to eat. Independence is a tiny town, which in my opinion was not sufficient for a decent resupply, as the food options are limited. Big Pine is a small town that's got the basics for a resupply, though it's lacking the extras such as laundromat and camping stores. Bishop is a full city with a huge range of all the facilities needed for a resupply stop. I did not meet anyone who had a bad experience in Bishop, though it did become a bit of a vortex for some, sucking them into spending multiple zeros. I spent three zeros there myself. Most people stay in one of the hostels or share rooms in one of the many motels and the good thing is everything is within walking distance and once again some great places to eat. Levining is a small town with all the essentials for a resupply. It's an alternate option from Tuolumne Meadows with a much better range of facilities including a decent food market with a good health food section. It's friendly towards hikers and it has some great cafes. Bridgeport is a small town with all the essentials for a resupply except there's no laundromat there. It's another town which is friendly to hikers though there are not many who resupply here. Um, there were a few bad reviews for this town but uh, in 2019 all of the reviews have been positive. The bonus of Bridgeport is that there's a couple of hot springs nearby including one just a mile outside of town. Mammoth Lakes is a good sized tourist town with all of the facilities needed for a resupply. It's a little spread out but there is a free bus that takes you around the town. Surprisingly, it was not as expensive as I was expecting for a resort town. It ended up being not much different from most of the little towns on the trail. I had the second best pizza on trail here, uh, with the best being at Agua Dulce, and Mammoth Mountaineering was one of the best outdoor shops on the trail. Resupply options closer to the trail are Muir Trail Ranch, Vermilion Valley Resort, known as VVR, Mono Hot Springs Resort and Tuolumne Meadows. 
The Muir Trail Ranch is a family-owned guest ranch only one and a half miles off trail. They don't have much, but it does allow you to break up one of the longer sections and avoid the expense of EVR. They have a small store, but it generally doesn't have food, just a few small camping things like bug spray. Most people send themselves resupply packages here. These resupply packages must be sent in a five gallon bucket with a maximum of 25 pounds and the cost is $85. That's the most expensive um, resupply package cost on the trail but it does need to be transported and stored and then transported including over a lake and then the final part is packed on horses and mules to the ranch. The picking up of the resupply bucket is only between 8am and 5pm. If you book accommodation with them, which is cabins or fancy tents, you get home-cooked meals, showers and laundry. But these facilities are not available to hikers who have not booked accommodation with them. There is a hot spring near to the ranch. Vermilion Valley Resort or Vivia is a very common resupply option. They have accommodation a store with food, restaurant, showers, laundry, and they accept resupply packages. The resupply packages cost $30 per package, though in the months of May and after the 15th of September, this increases to $50 per package, and that's if they're even open. They usually open from June to October, but that's depending on the snow. If you're not renting accommodation from them, Then you can have a shower for $7, which includes soap and a towel. And laundry is $7 per load, and that also includes the soap. Accommodation options, a free camping for two nights in the hiker camping area, a bed in the hiker hostel tent for $15, or the other accommodations such as yurts, motel rooms, and trailers. Be aware these prices are 2019 prices. Their store is open seven days a week from 7am till at least 8pm and the store features a wide variety of food, repair items and camping supplies including fuel canisters. Their restaurant is open seven days a week from 7am until 8pm and the restaurant offers big portions of home cooked meals. Saturday night from 5 to 8 is barbecue night. Mono Hot Springs Resort is a less well-known option, but it's only three miles south of VVR. The resort contains a restaurant, hot springs bathhouse, campground, cabins, a store with basic food, and a post office in the store. The store hours are 7.30am to 9pm, seven days a week. The general store has the main staples, including fresh fruit, um, and it also sells some camping supplies. Tuolumne Meadows is very close to the trail and it has a store, post office, restaurant and a campground. It is open from the end of May to the end of September depending on snow conditions. The store hours are 8am to 8pm. It has a good selection of camping food and supplies. The restaurant is a a grill type restaurant and it's open from 8am to 6pm. The post office is open Monday to Friday from 9 to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 to 1 p.m. and it does accept resupply packages. Accommodation at the campground is $6 for a tent site, showers are $5 and laundry is $4. As I said in my introduction, there are 19 options to exit the PCT East onto Route 395. The most common exits are Cottonwood Pass, Cursage Pass, Reds Meadows to Mammoth Lakes. When there is a lot of snow and Mule Trail Ranch and VVR are closed, the Bishop Pass Trail is also used. The other exits are options to shorten your resupply loads or exits in the case of adverse weather. I'm now going to go through each of the exit routes that lead to the resupply towns. The exit routes leading to Lone Pine are Highway Pass Trail, Alantia Pass, Mulkey Pass, Trail Pass, Cottonwood Pass and the Whitney Portal. Please excuse the pronunciation of some of these place names. The Highway Pass Trail is not used much and it's overgrown and faint in many places. The last two miles are difficult to follow as it was damaged by flooding in the past. It leaves the PCT 
at 8,071 feet and it climbs up to Highway Pass at 8,180 feet before dropping down to the car park at Highway Canyon Road at 4,490 feet. The trail from the PCT to the road is 9.4 miles and then it's a further 2.5 miles to get to Route 395. A luncher pass trail is also lightly used but it is maintained much better than highway pass trail. The trail exits at the PCT at 9,088 feet and climbs gently to Olancha Pass, 9,220 feet. It then descends following along the top of a ravine before dropping down. The last section may be a little overgrown. It is 6.8 miles from the PCT to the trailhead, which is at 5,790 feet, and it's 3.9 miles down to Route 395. Milky Pass Trail is not well maintained. It drops to a meadow that follows a stream which needs to be crossed before climbing back up to the Horseshoe Meadows car park. The trail exits the PCT at 10,394 feet and drops to Horseshoe Meadows car park, 9,951 feet. It's 1.9 miles from the PCT to the car park at Horseshoe Meadows and then 22 miles by road to Route 395. Be aware when there is snow, a, a significant portion of this route is closed to vehicles. The Trail Pass Trail is well maintained and has a gentle gradient via switchbacks down to Horseshoe Meadows. This is the easiest of the three trails leading to Horseshoe Meadows Trail. The trail exits the PCT at 10,495 feet and it drops down to Horseshoe Meadows Car Park at 9,951 feet. It is 1.8 nine miles from the PCT to the car park at Horseshoe Meadows and then it's the same 22 miles to Route 395. The Cottonwood Pass Trail is well maintained and descends via a series of switchbacks. The trail exits the PCT at 11,132 feet and drops to the Horseshoe Meadows car park. It's 3.8 miles from the PCT to get to the car park at Horseshoe Meadows. The Whitney Portal route is on a well-maintained and busy trail. There are two exits from the PCT at miles 766.3 and 767. The first turn-off goes past the Crabtree Meadows Campground and Razor Station, but it does involve a river crossing. The other option involves climbing a bit higher first. The trail... The trails join together after just under a mile and then they climb up to the Mount Whitney Trail Junction at 13,432 feet, which is 6.1 miles from the PCT. The trail then descends 8 miles to the Whitney Portal Car Park, which is at 8,337 feet, and then it's 12 miles to Lone Pine by road. Big note here is that your PCT permit does not allow you to go east of the Mount Whitney Trail Junction. You must get a permit from the US Forest Service and just be aware the Mount Whitney permits are very popular and they're actually allocated through a lottery because of their popularity. This route would be considered an emergency exit only due to adverse weather as opposed to a resupply exit option. However, take into account the fact that it climbs up to 13,000 feet, so it's not an easy exit. Leading to the town of Independence, a Shepherd Pass, Cursage Pass, Baxter Pass, Sawmill Pass and Taboose Pass trails. The Shepherd Pass Trail is a challenging, sparsely travelled steep trail, talked about with shudders by those who have completed it. The trail exits at PCT at 10,922 feet and climbs gently through a marshy area to Shepherd's Pass at 12,000 feet. The descent down is by a very steep snow chute, or if there's no snow, then scree switchbacks. It drops steeply down to Anvil Camp. The next section of trail is wiped out by a flash flood and it's difficult to follow about a mile. The trail then goes through the Shepherd Creek Canyon before climbing 500 feet up to the saddle by Mount 
Beggin before dropping steeply by about 50 switchbacks down to the Symes Creek Ken Canyon. Crosses the creek multiple times, heading down to the desert at the trailhead, which is at 6,300 feet. It's 15.2 miles from the PCT to the car park and then 7.3 miles by road to Route 395. Kursage Pass Trail is the most common f exit point. The Kursage Pass Trail is the most common first resupply exit point. The trail is well maintained and well populated. There are two exit points off the PCT. The first at mile 788.5 and elevation 10,525 feet and it goes along the side of Bullfrog Lake. The second exit is at mile 788.9, which is at 10,748 feet. This one traverses the hills above the Bullfrog Lake. The trails join just before the last steep ascent to Kursage Pass, which is at 11,760 feet. It's 2.9 miles from the PCT to the pass, and then the trail descends steeply for another 4.7 miles to the Onion Valley Car Park, which is at 9,203 feet. It's then another 13 miles down Onion Valley Road to the town of Independence. The Baxter Pass Trail is a steep and rugged trail that is poorly maintained, seldom used, and has several stream crossings. The trail exits the PCT at 10,220 feet and climbs to Baxa Pass at 12,300 feet before dropping steeply down to the desert to the trailhead at 6,000 feet. The last three and a half miles pass for an old burn area and the trail is occasionally blocked or obscured by fallen trees or bush. It's 12.2 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 4.7 miles to Route 395. The Sawmill Pass Trail is a strenuous trail that is poorly maintained. It is another trail talked about with shudders by those that attempt it. The trail exits the PCT at 10,367 feet and climbs to Sawmill Pass at 11,350 feet. It drops down to Sawmill Lake at 10,000 feet and then drops very steeply down to the desert at 4,600 feet on a steep and overground trail. It's 15 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 2 miles to Route 395. The Taboose Pass Trail is a steep and strenuous trail with a major river crossing. It's been damaged by a major wildfire in 2019 and as at December 2019 it is still closed due to the fire damage. If it's open it is a better trail than the Sawmill Pass or Bishop Pass trails in poor weather due to the lower climb over the pass. The trail exits the PCT at 10,778 feet and climbs gently to Taboose Pass at 11,417 feet. It then drops steeply down the Taboose Creek Canyon, crosses a major river and descends through sagebrush over black lava rocks to the desert floor at the Owens Valley Trailhead, which is at 5,550 feet. It's 9.4 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 6 miles to Route 395. Leading to Bishop, uh, Bishop Pass Trail, Mono Pass Trail and McGee Pass Trail. Bishop Pass Trail is a popular and well-maintained trail. The trail exits the PCT at 8,747 feet and climbs relatively easily via multiple switchbacks up a steep hill. Be aware after two miles there is a major river cross crossing. The trail climbs over Bishop Pass which is at 11,972 feet. The descent is steeper than the climb and it's 11.8 miles from the PCT to the South Lake Picnic area and then a further 22.1 miles by road to Route 395. Mono Pass Trail is a moderate trail with only a few steep parts but does have three main creek crossings. The trail exits the PCT at 8,350 feet and follows Mono Creek before climbing to Mono Pass at 10,599 feet. The trail drops going past Ruby Lake and then down Little Lakes Valley to the Little Lake Trailhead at 10,300 feet. 
It's 13.4 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 10.3 miles along the road to Route 395. Just note, once the trail hits the Little Lakes Valley, it becomes a lot better maintained and um, more people will be on it. The McGee Pass Trail is a moderate trail with several river crossings. The trail is often washed out in sections and it can be hard to find in places. The trail exits the PCT at 9,547 feet and climbs to McGee Pass at 11,895 feet. It then descends via Scree Switchbacks to Big McGee Lake and then drops gently through scrubland and Ashpen Groves to the McGee Creek Trailhead at 7,850 feet. It's 11.9 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 2.5 miles to Route 395. Just off the PCT are the exits to Mule Trail Ranch, VVR, Mono Hot Springs Resort and Tuolumne Meadows. The Mule Trail Ranch is by an easily accessible well-maintained trail. The trail exits the PCT at mile 857.7 at the Florence Lake turnoff. It drops 1.3 miles to Blaney Meadows and then it's 0.2 miles to the ranch. The Vermilion Valley Resort is accessed either from mile 874 at the Bear Ridge Trail Junction or at mile 878.7. The route down the Bear Ridge Trail is a decent downhill for 4.7 miles and then it follows a road along the flat beside Lake Thomas Edison for the last 2.3 miles. The other option is exiting at mile 878.7 and following a good trail for 1.3 miles before turning east at a junction and walking another 0.1 mile to the Lake Edison Ferry pickup point. The water taxi runs from approximately June through to October and it departs twice a day at 9.45 a.m. and 4.45 p.m. The fare for the water taxi is $13 per person one way or $23 for a round trip and this is paid at the general store on arrival. Reservations are not required. Large groups may be able to arrange a special pickup but it'll be a minimum $85 charge. The Mono Springs Resort is accessed by the Bear Ridge Trail as per the VVR access, but once on the road, it's 4.2 miles down the road to the resort. Exits leading to Mammoth Lakes, a Horseshoe Lake Trail, Reds Meadow and Agnew Meadows. The Horseshoe Lake Trail is generally only used when Reds Meadow is closed due to snow. The trail exits the PCT at 8,924 feet and there are two options. The upper crater route to the junction is 1.6 miles and the lower crater route is 2 miles. The trails join and then climb gently over Mammoth Pass at 9,265 feet. It's 3.5 miles from the PCT to the Horseshoe Lakes car park. It's in another 2.8 miles to the Tumarak car park and this section may be closed in heavy snow. It's from Tumarak car park, it's then 2.5 miles by road to Mammoth Lakes. The Reds Meadow exit is 0.3 miles from the PCT to the Reds Meadow resort and then it's 13 miles to Mammoth Lakes. When the road is open and in season there is a bus from the resort down to Mammoth Lakes. The Agnew Meadows exit. For the Agnew Meadow exit, the PCT crosses the Agnew Meadows Road and you follow this road downhill for 0.2 of a mile down to the Minaret Summit Road and from there it's 8 miles to Mammoth Lakes and the bus does stop at this point. Leading to Lee Vining, a Agnew Pass Trail and Rush Trail. The Agnew Pass Trail is a lightly travelled trail. The trail exits the PCT at 9,715 feet and climbs up to Summit Lake at 10,183 feet. It then drops slightly before going up and over Agnew Pass at 9,900 feet. The trail descends to Clark Lakes and Spooky Meadow before dropping steeply down multiple switchbacks. It crosses a bridge over Rush Creek and then follows the popular Rush Creek Trail to the trailhead. 
It's 3.4 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 6.3 miles to Route 395. Rush Trail is a popular and well-maintained trail. The trail exits the PCT at 10,066 feet and passes several lakes before a short steep drop by switchback to the trailhead by Silver Lake. At 6.4 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 6.3 miles to Route 395. To get to Twallaby Meadows is very easy. The PCT crosses Route 120, or also known as Tiago Road, at mile 942.5. And you turn left or west and walk 0.3 of a mile along this road to get to the Tuolumne Meadows store. Leading to Bridgeport are the Virginia Pass Trail, the Burrow Pass Trail and the Buckeye Pass Trail. Virginia Pass Trail is overgrown to the pass and then it improves. The trail exits the PCT at 8,540 feet and follows Virginia Canyon beside Return Creek before climbing to Virginia Pass at 10,550 feet. It's 8.6 miles from the PCT to the Virginia Lakes Trailhead and then 5.4 miles to Route 395. The Burrow Pass Trail is a moderately maintained trail. The trail exits the PCT at 8,501 feet and climbs north along the Matterhorn Creek up in the Matterhorn Canyon up to Burrow Pass at 11,120 feet. It drops and heads east along Slide Canyon before climbing over Mule Pass at 10,440 feet and joining the Rock Island Pass Trail to Robinson Creek and then heading north along Robinson Creek to the Twin Lakes Trailhead. It is 17.4 miles from PCT to the trailhead and 13.8 miles to Route 395 near Bridgeport. The Buckeye Pass Trail is a moderate and seldom travelled trail. The trail exits the PCT at 8,812 feet and follows the Ranchera Creek. It then turns onto the Peeler Lake Trail one mile south of Buckeye Pass, so it doesn't actually go over Buckeye Pass. The trail heads north along Robinson Creek, passing Peeler Lake at 9,488 feet and continues to the Twin Lakes Trailhead. It is 12.4 miles from the PCT to the trailhead and then 13.8 miles to Route 395 near Bridgeport. And now a summary of all of the exit points. So this first table is covering from Kennedy Meadows to near Bishop and as you can see it's got the name of the exit point the PCT mile marker just be aware these PCT miles are 2019 mile markers so it may change plus or minus a mile or two for 2020. The trail distance is a distance you're actually hiking from the PCT to the trailhead. The road distance is a distance from the trailhead through to the nearest resupply location and the next column is showing the nearest resupply locations. The PCT exit height is the altitude where the exit trail leaves the PCT. And the pass height is the highest point of the exit trail. Then the distance from Kennedy Meadows and the distance to Sonora Pass. For those of you going southbound, sorry, this is set up for nobos, but I'm sure you can just reverse the figures. This next table is now shown from Bissop all the way through to Sonora Pass. Um, it's very interesting seeing the pass heights, which is going to be one of your criteria when you're looking at emergency exits due to poor weather. Obviously you want to have the shortest trail distance and the lowest pass height. Now I'm going to go through some different options for resupply. So option one is going to be looking at a normal uh, summer condition with a fast hiker and then the next option will be normal summer conditions with a slower hiker. Then we'll go into high snow conditions, first of all with the fast and experienced in the snow hiker and then the last option is looking at high snow year with a slower hiker and or a less experienced hiker.
Option one in good conditions for a faster hiker is minimizing the time off trail. It really only goes off trail once, the first time at Cursage Pass, resupplying through Lone Pine. The other two stops are close to the trail at VVR and then Tuolumne. There's some decent length uh, legs with 86 miles for a couple of them, uh, 68, 74 miles. And in these sorts of conditions, I'd be expecting around 20 mile days. Option two is the normal conditions with a slower hiker or a hiker that doesn't want to carry as much weight, so therefore wants shorter resupply legs. Unfortunately, there's still uh, a couple of um, longer legs with one 69 mile leg and a 74 mile leg, but this option reduces the weight that the individuals will have to carry. So this is exiting Trail Pass, resupplying Lone Pine. Exiting Cursage Pass, resupplying Bishop, resupplying at Mule Trail Ranch and then exiting Reeds Meadow to Mammoth Lakes and resupplying again at Tuolumne before the long leg through to Sonora Pass. There is a danger with this many resupplies that you'll be getting very close to the 35 day limit because you do lose time going off trail and you'd have to be very disciplined not to be taking multiple zeros once you're off trail. Now option three is for high snow for a, a medium to fast hiker and someone that is experienced in the snow and as you can see it's only exiting the trail twice leaving Cursage Pass to either Lone Pine or Bishop and leaving at Horseshoe Lake Trail to Mammoth Lakes. This option is assuming all of the on-trail options are closed such as Mule Trail Ranch, Vivia and Tuolumne Meadows. This is my exact resupply strategy for 2019. Section 1, Kennedy Meadows to Cursage Pass took me six and a half days. However, I had two half days sitting out waiting on a storm. So in reality, it would have only been five and a half days. And for this section, I averaged around 13 miles a day. However, if it was only the full walking days... It was 17 miles. Section 2 from Cursage Pass to Horseshoe Lake took me 9 days and I averaged around 13 miles a day. And then Section 3 from Horseshoe Lake through to Sonora Pass took me 7.5 days and I was averaging around 15 miles a day. Option four is now for the high snow and someone less experienced in the snow or slower. Um, and this is keeping a lot of the legs shorter, but you still have a couple of longer legs of 72 and 73 miles. You're at extreme risk of this option of not getting through within the 35 days. You have to be very disciplined and not be taking zeros going through. I hope you enjoyed that. This was part two of my video series, Getting Through the Sierra. Uh, the next video is going to be strategies for the passes, showing you, discussing what the passes are, showing you the routes going through them. Um, and then the following video will be dealing with the cold and the final one will be looking at snow skills. That's the end of this video. Um, I hope you found it useful. Just a, a disclaimer, this information is my personal opinions and information I've gained through my uh, research. Um, I can only talk from personal experience on the towns of Independence Lone Tire. I can only speak from personal experience on Cursage Pass, Horseshoe Trail, Lone Pine Independence, Bishop and Mammoth Lakes. Um, apart from that, it's information from reviews from various sources and research on the internet. So please check the trail conditions with the local management agencies before taking them.